Julio Cesar Chavez is the most renowned and greatest boxer from Mexico, but as often happens, after suffering a serious defeat, he was unable to regain his former form. Today we will talk about the legendary fight that buried the career of Julio Cesar Chavez, and we will also reveal all the details of the famous fight against Oscar de la Hoya, one of the scandalous fights of 1996. Chavez, 33, was a Mexican national hero entering the 99th professional fight of his career. Chavez entered the fight with a record of 96 wins, 1 loss, and 1 draw, with 78 victories coming by knockout. And even though he held the WBC junior welterweight title at that time, it seemed that his best days were clearly behind him. In 1993, he had a draw with Pernell Whitaker. The punishment that Whitaker inflicts here. And then he had two split decisions against Frankie Randall in 1994. The first fight was not in Chavez's favor. After the rematch win over Randall, Chavez had beaten the fated Meldrick Taylor in a rematch, plus Tony Lopez, Giovanni Parisi, Craig Houck, David Kamau, and Scott Walker. Now Chavez going to the head, down goes Taylor! Not a bad run and he was winning fights, but he was no longer the Chavez of old. Time was taking its natural course with his career. De La Hoya, meanwhile, was 23 years old, fresh, skilled, naturally bigger than Chavez, and being anointed the new king of boxing's non-heavyweight weight classes. De La Hoya was a once-in-a-generation Mexican-American boxer about to enter his prime. But more than a fight between a once great boxer versus another with expectations of greatness, Chavez versus De La Hoya symbolized something more in the United States Mexican community. Chavez versus De La Hoya divided people, even families, splitting them along generational, gender, and class divides. The fight between Chavez and De La Hoya became a proxy for all the complexities that come from being of Mexican ethnicity, living in a place that was once Mexico. And now it's time for battle. Cooler than yesterday, Richard, and I don't think it's gonna be a fight. The fight was titled Ultimate Glory. On June 7th, 1996, Julio Cesar Chavez faced Oscar de la Hoya. Across Mexico and the United States, hundreds of thousands more gathered to watch Chavez, a man some saw as a god, box against de la Hoya, a man who sought to escape from the Mexican's shadow. The fight lasted less than four rounds. Desde la mano, yo lo bendiga a los dos. Deafening roar when Chavez was introduced, and De La Hoya got quite a welcome as well. Round number one, four fights that De La Hoya has involved in. He has recorded round chaos. Only one minute into round one, De La Hoya connected with a straight right hand that opened up a huge gash around Chavez's eye. Hoya catches Chavez up. Right hand, De La Hoya was seven years old. Now defending at the waist in his career that he has developed now. The fight was temporarily halted not even a minute later as the cut had become severe enough for the referee Joe Cortez to stop the action and allow Chavez to find a towel. Though Chavez was able to continue, he was unable to get any momentum and was dominated by De La Hoya for the remainder of the fight. Chavez back into the fight here. The cut, frankly, looks out into the crowd. 
Holding his arms close to his middle to avoid Chavez's brutal body punching, De La Hoya relied on his speed, jab, and improved head movement to emerge from the fight as pretty as he went into it. We'll see the Chavez left coming up here, Gabe. Chavez wasn't so lucky. The wound on his left eye continued to grow. For him, I don't think he's going to work against Oscar. Oscar's a great fighter, and uh, he's showing it tonight. Chavez. In round four, as Chavez was finally mounting some offense. Chavez is coming after him. Yeah. Hoy trying to keep Chavez off with the jab. Yeah, I haven't seen him use those well. punches in... Uh, the La Hoya took control of the latter stages of the round and brutalized Chavez with a series of hard combinations and broke Chavez's nose with a left hook. The ring there and then landed the body shot. Now De La Hoya comes back and here's the one we expected. Blood pouring out of the eye of Chavez now. Chavez hurt by the He's able to jab with the right hand again with the every shot. He's trying to defend against him. Look at that uppercut from De La Hoya. You see as he's throwing those punches. Oh, as the cut around his eye had deteriorated even further, Cortez halted the fight once again and sent him to ringside physician Flip Holmansky. Holmansky then informed Cortez that Chavez could not continue due to the multiple lacerations to his face and De La Hoya was awarded with the TKO victory at 237 of the fourth round. It's not the way that you expected it. He's attributes the uh, loss basically to the cut, being hit in the uh, first round, not being able to continue. He claims he couldn't see. Apparently he had a little bit of a problem beforehand, but he claims that he did not feel uh, Oscar's punch, although this was uh, what eventually uh, stopped the fight. He said he still had uh, lots of fight left in him and that uh, he should, will be coming back. That event of June 7th, 1996 marked the decline of the great Mexican champion and triggered a series of negative reactions for Julio up the ring. Recently, Chavez revealed the reason why he regretted fighting with the Golden Boy. In an interview with Eric L. Terrible Morales for the podcast on Round Moss, he talked about what he experienced before going into the ring to face De La Hoya. It was five days before the fight, and in the last round there was this idiot in sparring, and he ended up cutting me. I didn't cancel the fight because the doctor told me, we'll cauterize the wound, and I believed it, I really did. But I think God punished me there, said the former Mexican boxer. Over the years and 25 years of the fight, he regretted his decision because he let down the Mexican public who trusted him. Aware of the million dollar bets in boxing, Chavez regretted that his disbelief hurt others who believed that he would win. He knew that because of his injury he was obliged to postpone the fight, but he preferred to move on, but he only sealed his defeat, which was plagued by a heartbreaking image. Not satisfied with the outcome of the first fight, Julio Cesar challenged Oscar de la Hoya in a second match in September 1998, but fell again to the Golden Boy, this time retired in eight rounds. Chavez would just keep fighting for nearly another decade, even after the second loss to De La Hoya in 1998. In the end, Chavez retired with a record of 107 wins, 6 losses, and 2 draws, with 85 victories coming by knockout, and his own unquestioned place in the Hall of Fame as maybe Mexico's all-time greatest fighter. As for the Oscar, even if the Mexican fans never accepted it 100%, it would be fair to say that De La Hoya overall did okay for himself. In this fight, he claims a world title in a third weight class at age 23, in just his 22nd professional fight. De La Hoya was never fully embraced by the Mexican fan base due to his marketing as a pretty boy and his non-traditional image as a fighter, which included ventures like pop music and skip slash fit. Moreover, some Mexican fans believe that he showed disrespect to the legendary Chavez by entering the ring with him during the twilight of his career. They never forgave him for using Chavez as a stepping stone. He'd go on to win further belts at 147, 154, and 160, too, making him a six-division champ and a modern boxing legend, but that's a different story.